go to Matthew 5, verses 23 through 24. There if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there, there thou rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave thee there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. What it's saying is this, we come and bring our tithes and offerings to church and we still have got aught with our brother. That doesn't mean we're mad or angry or, or hating them. It just means there's something between you that the devil can use to break up the relationship between us and God. This inspired evaluation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as the supreme authority is the reflection of Jesus' own teaching about himself. I'll start with 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach them men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now we are happy that Jesus said this. These are all words from Jesus that he's talking about learn to love one another over and over and over again that builds a strong bond between us and the Lord Jesus proclaims that the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him Christianity is whatever he reveals it to be all that is true he brings to fulfillment all that is false he judges not a jot or nor a tittle the smallest part of a letter, like the dotting of an I or the crossing of a T of truth, will be lost or fail to be fulfilled. Jesus' call is a standard of righteousness higher than that of the scribes and Pharisees. He will be content with nothing short of truth, love, and God's will. If we look at Matthew 5, verse 21, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, or you empty-headed, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. He will be content with nothing short of truth, love, and God's will. What we just read contains the first of six illustrations that our Lord used to clarify his meaning, which the people heard as it was read in the synagogue. Let me explain that a little bit. The sixth commandment is what it is in, verse, in Exodus 20, verse 13, which the people heard as it was read in the synagogue. The better translation is, you shall not murder. Moses' commands, command says nothing about the slaying of animals. The law provided for the taking of human life by the authorities. It provided for the taking of life without guilt under certain circumstances by an individual, as in self-defense, accidental death, and in war approved by the state. Jesus is obviously thinking of murder that is, the taking of another life in anger or for personal advantage. Jesus said, I say unto you. Jesus speaks as an independent authority above the Mosaic law. He did not cancel the law that said, you shall not murder. He did not lower the standard a single jot or tittle. He did fulfill it by emphasizing its inner content and purpose. Here's the thing about being disciples that we are. That's what we are as disciples. We're followers of Christ and we learn from Christ to be more Christ-like. A disciple will not provoke anger that leads to murder. 
Unjust anger is sin. For such an offense, a person was li liable to appear before the local Jewish court in Deuteronomy 16, 18. Name calling that leads to anger is wrong. One who called another a simpleton or a blockhead or a moron could be in danger of being called before the Sanhedrin and one who called another a scoundrel could be in danger of God's judgment in the fire of Gehenna. The fires burned day and night. Gehenna, Valley of Hinnon, was an illustration of hell, God's trash heap. Words spoken in anger can cause great damage. One person said, I say what I think, to which another person replied, even a furnace has a filter.